Hello, everybody. Uh, we are starting on the free to play today. I'm very, very excited uh, because we finally, finally, finally get to pull some sacred shards. We've been looking forward to this. We've been talking about it for a week now. Um, I'm super, super excited here. So, um, okay, we are going to. So, first things first, we're going to complete my dailies here so i wanted to show you a little trick that i do for my dailies because i've saved up enough mysteries to do this now so i do a 10 times summon i do this once i do this every day where i summon 10 it gets me the three and you're like well you only need three why are you summoning 10 well then what i do is i go into the tavern upgrade level and then what do i have the most brews of it's going to be magic so we take a magic guy we throw a brew on him we put three others on him and he is good to go. And then if I do... Da, 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 da. So it takes five total because you need to spend one to then upgrade them. So those remaining four that we just had there, I won't use. But usually you'll be able to use all your one stars uh, up. Um, so in this particular instance, I've got an extra one star. That's fine. I'm not worried about it. We've got plenty of room to open up these shards today. So... Um, but that gets me both of those quests done. The champion's level in the tavern is done. And then summon three champions is done. So we get both of those done. We ex complete the quest. We complete the quest. We complete the quest. And we get all the new quests, which is this is also a great time. Um, and we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail in an upcoming question block this weekend. But when you re do your weekly re reset and your monthly reset... You get access to a lot of energy and resources, again, that you get to do quests on. This is a great time to be farming up and um, using some of those resources. Um, all right, so we have four sacreds. There was a, I wanted to talk about a couple quick things first before we get into the shard pull. Um, first, Forge Pass. I was on such a long rant yesterday. We didn't really get to talk about Forge Pass at all, but... Um, this is not only an amazing set in general, it's also very, very good for a clan boss. Two of his three attacks are AOE attacks, 15%, reducing the damage taken from those attacks by 15%, plus 10% defense, and it's a two-piece set. Uh, Defiant is just a flat-out great set, uh, not just for clan boss, but in general. Um, and it's really, really good for kind of filling in, like, those extra two slots, right? Like, let's say you want somebody to be in lifesteal set or a bolster set or something, you know, a four piece set. Well, then you have those last two spots. And it's like, well, what do I put them in there? Well, you could put, possibly put them in a defiant set, you know, give them a little bit of extra damage reduction from AOE attacks and an extra amount of defense. And obviously this is great for defense based champions and nukers. Uh, Armager is the one that free-to-play accounts this early on would have access to that could really benefit from Defiant. So um, so I really want to push this set um, because it's better for what the content, you know, I, I didn't try for Instinct set, but this set, Defiant, is really, really good to push um, for an early game account because it is 15% damage reduction is really, really big. I mean, just imagine two of these sets on my Ursula, you know, that's a ton of damage reduction coming in on top of all the damage reduction buffs that she gives, um, you, you know, or even just one, one, one set is still going to be, very, very big for clan boss. So, uh, because if she stays alive, she keeps reviving people and we keep on fighting. That brings me to the other news I wanted to, to cover. Check this out, guys. This blew my mind. Now, I don't believe this is the norm. This is absolute luck. But if we go look at Nightmare and we come down and we look at the free to play, I almost three keyed this. We need 39.1 million. I did 38.39 million. So we do have one extra key left. I'll use that off, off camera. I don't need to, to make you guys watch, um, you know, an eight minute or however long it is. Um, clan boss battle anymore. We've, we've, we've covered it. This, this team works. It's a good team. Um, so 
but uh and i know you guys are excited uh, i hope you guys are as excited about shard pulling as i am um but i did want to say like that was pretty cool and a lot of that has to do with the blessings that we've recently got and then a little bit of rng in there as well so um i was really really excited when i saw that i almost uh three keyed it and wanted to show you guys that so um my last thing before we start pulling shards i know that my video uh, was a little bit ranty yesterday. I most comment, not maybe not actually most commented, but I had a lot of comments on the video. Um, I haven't had a chance to like read all of them because um, some of them were pretty long paragraphs and I had work today. But for the most part, like I'm I'm hearing what you guys are saying. Um, you know, we're I'm I'm going to try and be a little less ranty. And I'm going to address a lot of this in, in the question block episode this week, too. But, um, you know, my whole thing is that I want to be transparent with you guys. I want to be, um, I hate to say real, you know, but because it just, it, it reminds me of, I think it was an SNL monologue where Pete Davidson was like, I'm the real me or, you know, and that's what I hear in my head whenever I say I want to be real or whatever, but I want to be honest and I want to be like clear with you guys. Um, but I also want to keep in mind new players. One of the most frustrating things for me when I first got into raid was how there's so much information out there across so many other channels but so many of those channels that have been making content in this game have been making this content for four years, some five years maybe. And I don't know that they necessarily remember what it's like to be new in the game. Um, and I mean like brand new. Like I have a friend of mine that I've been teaching the game and you know, I say things and they're like, okay, but what does that mean? And I'm like, oh, you're right. Yeah. You don't even know what brews are. And like, I'll say stuff there, you know, like, oh yeah, I got so excited. I pulled a, I pulled a soul on my, on my coffin smasher. What's a soul? Like he doesn't even have a uh, altar of souls unlocked. You know, uh, we talk about doom tower and I'm like, oh yeah, there's this thing, doom tower. And I'll show him on my phone. But like, yeah, look, you have all these, you know, all these bosses to beat and it's like what <laughs> i i can't even i can't even clear level five of a dungeon or what I'm, I'm making up numbers i'm not saying that's that's true um you know and it's like it can be very very overwhelming and and it's very easy to think that you're not able to do it and and, and you'll never get to that point i remember thinking i'm never going to be able to do to do to do I'm never going to be able to do Doom Tower. I'm never going to be able to do Hydra, and I'll never complete Faction Wars. Well, Faction Wars is completed. I've clear. I've done brutal Hydra. I can. I can one key it. Um, obviously, Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss. I've finished all of the Doom Towers on my main account. You know, so uh, it took me a long time to do it. This is a long, lengthy game, and if you're passionate about it like I am, it can be very fulfilling. Um, and we've got new content right around the corner, hopefully. So, um, but I digress. That's not what we're here for. We are here to open up some shards. So let's get into it. I'm very, very excited. Uh, quick recap for the new players. Why am I opening up my sacred shards today? We are on a 2x legendary, so you can see right here we have a 12% get chance of getting a legendary. This 10% chance right here to get a uh, croc bar is going on right now. Um, one time if the first attack is critical. Um, shield buff on this champion heals them brings crit rate and crit damage and an extra turn depending on which stat is the highest i so i'm looking at him because we have a 10 times chance to get him he's interesting i don't know that i'm like 
he was rated a four star on Hell Hades, which I saw. Um, so maybe there's more to his kit than I than meets the eye, but it doesn't look, it doesn't read well on paper. I'll say that. Like the the um, the passive of reducing stats is is really really good. I under completely understand how great that would be. Uh, my only question is, um. Does it help, like, in, like, how effective is it in things like Clan Boss and stuff? But I'm not going to dive into a champion that we might not even pull. So let's just pull these shards. Okay, here we go. Number one. That's actually really good. Uh, am I, I might be wrong about this. And I know I didn't look at her kit. Yeah! She's one of the ones towards the fusion. I'm fixing my audio while I'm trying to talk to you guys here. So she's one of the ones for the fusion. That's not where I meant to go. Champions. Um, all right, let's look at her kit real quick. Provoke. Decrease attack. And basically an always up counter attack because she brings her own decrease attack. So that counter attack could be pretty interesting, you know, much in the way that it's interesting on something like Eris. Um, plus a provoke interesting champion, definitely one that I'm going to keep regardless because it goes towards that fusion. So uh, whether or not I end up using the champion is one thing, but I will definitely keep the champion. I might put some levels into them just for faction wars. You know, get a, get a nice little level forty going there. Maybe put a little little four star gear on her. You know, get her get her ge geared up. Okay, sorry. Um, let's here we go. Number two. Oh, I'm trying to fix my audio as it happened. I'm speechless right now. This is such a great poll, guys. It's it's oh my god, it's kind of mind blowing to me because because UDK was an early legendary for me on my main account. Um oh, I'm so excited. This is such a game changer. It really is. Okay, let's go over UDK's kit real quick. So UDK also known as Ultimate Death Knight. Uh, we have a Provoke on the A1. It's got a weak chance, um, but it is a chance. It can come in handy against many particular bosses as, as we fight. Um, decrease attack on the A2 with a chance to fear. That only applies on legendary champions. We have the shield and continuous heal. This is So we're bringing survivability and healing that we previously have not had on the account. We have, don't really have a healer and a shielder we didn't have. This is why we were struggling against Scarab Boss the other day. Um, and the shield is proportional to the champion's defense, which is great because you can build him um, pretty tanky uh, as far as, as defense goes. Um, too awesome to die. This is a great passive. Whenever an ally is attacked, has a 100% chance of completely blocking one hit Decreasing the in incoming damage to zero, this champion, will, uh, UDK, will receive the damage instead. It will also redirect any debuffs from the hit to this champion. The chance of blocking a hit and redirecting the debuffs decreases to 50% if the attacker is a boss. Does not work if the attack on the ally was an AoE attack. Uh, and then whenever an enemy is healed, heals this champion by 20% of that heal. So we're going to gain some extra survivability in uh pvp as well and then uh increase this champion's hp defense and speed by 10 percent for each dead ally which makes him a great farmer uh a uh, solower is what i meant to say um you could put him in a toxic set build him very tanky throw him in with some food the food dies and he just lives on and kills the boss over a very long period of time. Um, but it is a, a, a great option. He 
before the nerf to Brimstone, um, he actually carried me through a ton of content because I built him really high resist and really high defense, and he was able to survive and then just kill everything with Brimstone. I didn't even need a Toxic set. All right, we are still going to pull the other two shards. That does reset our Mercy, but we only that's only like my third shard I pulled on the account. Okay, here we go. Oh, wow. Okay. Lady Annabelle. It's it's just good to get her out of the way. So <laughs> Lady Annabelle can solo bommel in Doom Tower. End of story. Um, so to get her now, I, I know there's value for her in other areas of the game, but, but the main way, the main area I use her on the main account is to solo bommel. So to have her and to know I have her, Bommel is now never a problem for me pretty much the rest of the game. Um, so that's a huge pull to get. Um, is it going to benefit me on the account today? Not so much, but we have her for the future. And I'm, I'm super, super thrilled about that. Um, because basically what she does is... Anytime enemies die, she heals. Enemy, uh, so enemy or ally dies. So when you fight Bommel, he summons these big bombs around him. And when they explode, it's a minion dying. So she just heals herself up and she never dies. Uh, it takes forever to, to beat the boss, but it's a pretty effective strategy. Um, and Warmaster procs just, just bring the boss down. So um, great champion to pull. Definitely great champion to pull. So, so far, so good. We're sitting pretty good with our pulls here. Here we go. Last pull. What do we got? Another husk. A little less thrilled about that one. It is nice that I'll be able to do some faction guardians for undead hordes and get both husks in there and give ourselves more HP. Which, Husk is an HP-based champion, so we get more bonuses there. Um, sorry, I have to click all the red dots to make them go away. All right, so let's talk about overall. I mean, there are definitely worse champions to pull than Ultimate Death Knight. If I'm being completely honest, the only thing that has me a little bummed out about pulling Ultimate Death Knight... Um, and it sounds kind of like a, a silly reason to be bummed out is because I also, I've had him on my main <laughs> for a very long time and he was a free champion. So it just feels kind of, uh, you know, it's like, I don't get to try anybody new or fun, but I know what UDK can do. I know that I can build him very well. Um, I'm probably going to put him in a toxic set if I have the gear for it. So I really like to see that be defense percent. Um yeah, so I don't really have the right I could just stack him HP maybe, but um I don't really have the right kind of gear for him um to to be in a toxic set for now he is going to make wave based content way easier ooh he he's my answer for spider truly he is my he's a big answer for spider for me because the spiderlings will always target he's a he's a great spider tank so the little spiderlings when they attack they're always going to hit ultimate death knight because of his passive so i that's just really good because people won't die <laughs> um yeah i mean he's you know, I, that's how I use him on my main account. 
he's my spiderling tank. So the spiderlings hit him and I usually bring like a reviver, which we already have one. Right. But, um, so then when he does die, he just gets revived. I bring, a God seeker and Neary who automatically revives him right away. And so he just never, he's just constantly getting revived. And that, on, this is on hard mode when the, when they hit really, really, the little guys hit really, really hard. So, um, this is probably going to help me progress a little bit more in spider just because he's going to be able to tank the spiderlings way better than anybody else <clears throat> that I currently have on the account. Um, but Hey, we, we got our, we got our second legendary guys. I'm super excited. I know it doesn't seem like it. Like, again, it's not that he's a bad champion. He's a great champion. I'm so excited to have ultimate death. Knight. I know what he can do. I know how I want to build him. Like, it's great. It's just like, I want new, I want shiny, right? <laughs> I've got, I, I've, I've had him for, for pretty much the length of my account, you know? So I'm very, very familiar with him in PVP. He's going to be a huge help. Um, I don't know that he works his way into my current team though. And I say that because I use him in one of my teams. He's definitely going into tag team arena, but I use him in one of my teams in tag in uh like my go second team and he is very difficult to kill but but he doesn't necessarily put out the damage to to defeat the enemy team so i'm definitely going to do some playing around with him i don't think i have a soul for uh for him no i don't okay so Man, I'm I'm just glad we got a legendary, right, right, guys. So, what do we? No legendary books. He does take a lot of books, I think. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Um, I felt like it was longer, but that that it may just be in my head. So, okay. Now the big question is: Does he make a difference for Clan Boss? He brings a lot of what Ursula brings, um, but heavier shields. I think Ursula is still better because of her revives. He doesn't bring the revives. Um, and she brings increased attack as well as decreased attack. Does he replace Sun Wukong? I don't think so because Sun Wukong does more damage and has Brimstone right now, which obviously UDK would not have. <laughs> So I would rather bring Sun Wukong's higher attack-based damage than bring UDK's uh, defense-based damage. While I do have a defense buff, also from Ursula, I like the fact that Sun Wukong does a lot of damage. Um, and I do believe he does more damage than my, my, my Kale at the moment. Um... So I don't see UDK replacing anybody for now. Uh, obviously, those things can always change, but um, he is going to help me in dungeons, and he's definitely going to help me in wave-based content because he soaks up all the hits from the champions um, and keeps my team alive from a lot of the single-target hitters. He will probably... This is one area of the game that you know is a bit of a sleeper he's going to be able to solo a ton of content for the undead uh crypt which means that i should soon be able to get i almost did it on the dark elf crypt today uh some of the legendary crafting materials for perception and other gear sets um I don't know what gear drops, what what gear set you get from Undead Crypts. I hope it's Perception, because if I can get more Perception forging materials, I can craft the higher levels of Perception gear. So, super, super excited about that. Just excited in general about our pulls. Very, very satisfying. As far as the tournament, <laughs> it's funny that, well, you know, we're still getting smoked in the, the summon tournament. Uh, you know, 1552. I'll take a fourth place though. Six star, uh, relentless gear. 
That's pretty dang good. Um, would love to, you know, be able to go higher, but I'm not going to pull shards for that. So, all right. We got our first legendary. I'm going to end this video here. I thought about combining this with the other shard pulling video on the main account, but uh, I think I'm going to do them separate now just because this one took a little bit longer. Um, so thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.